If you're ready to experience truly predictive project management, you're in the right place. Welcome to Liquid Planner. In this video, we'll start with some key concepts and then take a quick tour of your workspace. Right now we're on the Projects tab. This is where you create your project plan and schedule your work. Liquid Planner calculates a realistic plan based on the priorities you establish here. The order that your work is placed in, from top to bottom, is how it will be scheduled. You can reorder your work via simple drag and drop. I can click on this project, drag and drop it, and place it up above the other projects. Now, the Data Center Upgrade project is higher in priority than the others. And Liquid Planner calculates the start and finish dates for me. This automatic rescheduling allows you to quickly and easily adjust the plan. The plan itself is made up of different items that serve different functions. We just saw that projects in Liquid Planner are blue folders. Subfolders, which are the gray ones, can represent the phases of your project. Tasks are the individual work items that need to get done for the project. Tasks are assigned to people who estimate the effort that it will take them to complete it. Ranged estimates on tasks are one of the main inputs that Liquid Planner uses to accurately calculate your schedule. Two other plan items to know are milestones and events. Milestones are fixed dates that represent important markers in the project, and events block work from being scheduled during vacations, holidays, or meetings. At the very top of the plan, you have an inbox. This is used as a holding bin for work that needs to be put into the plan. Items in the inbox don't affect your schedule. The next containers are called packages. Packages help you do two things. First, packages are great for organizing your projects and tasks. And second, packages let you intermingle tasks from different projects that are running at the same time, which helps you juggle priorities across all of your projects. Now within the Projects tab, there are different views. We've been looking at the Timeline view, but I can use Card view to see all of my work in a board display. And there's a baseline view if I'd like to compare the current plan to what it looked like on a specific day in the past. In this menu, you'll also find predefined reports that you can quickly run on any plan item, and also the trash. Let's stay on this row and move on over to the right. After the view menu, we have an add menu for adding the plan items we went over earlier, and also an edit menu for where you can request updates on items, run plan exports, or even run a PDF snapshot. To the right of the menus, I have a series of filtering tools. Filters are critical to keeping your plan focused on what is relevant. By default, you're filtered to viewing active items, which means that done items are hidden from view. Now let's take a look at the schedule bars. They represent work that is still left to be done, remaining work. The bar will span across the dates that the item is expected to be in progress and the expected finish date will be denoted with an E. This date is a prediction. Anytime you see an E next to hours or dates, that means you're looking at an expected calculation that could change depending on how things play out. Clicking on the bar will show you an overview of the progress and expected dates for that item. To get the full details, just double click on the item. The edit panel will open up on the right. Let's see what's in here for this task. You have the description at the top, and then below is the location of the task in your plan. You can also tag it with key terms. A little further down, the planning section will show you all of the important details for this item. This is where you can assign an owner, check schedule dates, mark the item done, and a whole lot more. There's a checklist section where you can break this task down into the individual steps necessary to complete it. Collaborate with other workspace members in the comments section, and just below, you can also add rich text notes for this task. Here's the document section where you can attach local files, or if you're a Google Drive, Dropbox, or Box user, links to those documents on those external directories. In the link section, you can cross-reference to another plan item in Liquid Planner, or add a link to an external site. In this section, you can add or edit dependencies, and finally, the history section is like an audit trail for this task. So that's an overview of the Projects tab. 
Let's continue the crash course with a quick overview of what you can accomplish on the other tabs in your workspace. We'll start with the Home tab. Here, you'll find an activity stream where you can see updates and comments from around the entire workspace. These buttons at the top let you control the scope of the activity stream to keep your attention on the stuff that matters most. My Work helps you make good decisions about what to work on next so you can be confident that you're getting the right work done. The upcoming tasks list shows you your assigned project work listed in start date order. Skim this list and add updates to tasks throughout the day to keep your team moving forward. You can also use your private to-do list to quickly capture ideas, reminders, and ad hoc work. The Timesheets tab is where you can see the hours you've logged this week. You can make edits to time entries and also submit your timesheet for review by a manager. The People tab shows you all of the members in your workspace, whether they're real members, virtual members, or portal guests. It's also where you can come to add new members into your workspace and control member access levels. The Dashboards tab is where you can build and view dynamic dashboards that communicate project information, status updates, and much more. Dashboards are an ideal way to share a curated view with workspace members or external guests. And finally, the Analytics tab. This tab is only visible to members with manager level access or above. This is where you can create dynamic custom reports across various plan dimensions. So that's a quick overview of your Liquid Planner workspace. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions along the way, and be sure to check out our video library to watch the rest of the Getting Started series.